Huh. It's been roughly a year since my partly improvised, poorly shot, and really, if we're gonna be honest, pretty judgmental video about the Steam Controller. And over the course of that year, something really weird has happened. I've kinda grown attached to this thing. I'm totally serious. It's mostly replaced my DualShock 4 as my de facto PC controller. Granted, most of the games I've been playing this year consist of my very favorites, plus Dark Souls, XCOM, and a seriously unhealthy dosage of Overwatch. I'm going to try and not spoil any of the games I've been playing for the upcoming Favorite Games project, but I want to say that about half of them are console games, which means I've been playing them with this controller, this controller, or this controller. <sighs> And the other half of them are PC games that I honestly prefer to play with a mouse and keyboard instead of any controller, let alone this one. And Overwatch, well, we can just throw that right out of the picture. I wouldn't play Overwatch with a controller at gunpoint, and the Steam controller's trackpads and motion controls certainly ain't changing that. And yet, even under those circumstances, I found myself getting used to this controller. We've been through a lot together. We've seen squad mates die in the field, we've seen some of my favorite gaming moments ever, and yeah, it's helped me beat this guy. What I've figured out is that as with any controller, you need the right game to help teach you how it works. Let's take the Wii Remote as a basic example. Now, this thing will look arcade and weird to anybody. I was there when the Wii was announced. I was confused too. But the moment you pop in Wii Sports and start playing some bowling, this thing makes some real sense. Sooner or later, you play enough of the game that you can start doing advanced tricks by holding down the buttons. And once you're used to Wii Sports, you're free to start playing other games that use the remote in other ways. Metroid Prime 3, Super Mario Galaxy, the possibilities are endless. Disclaimer, those two are not on the favorite games project. I am not spoiling anything. So it's clear that without a game to help learn the Wii Remote, this thing probably wouldn't have caught on. So how can we take that lesson and apply it to the Steam Controller? What is the Steam Controller's answer to Wii Sports? What games are best for learning this thing? Well, I have a solid three examples. Well, okay, one of them is kind of a compilation of examples, but whatever, my video. Three examples. Starting off, for the absolute gaming beginner, I have Portal 2. I found myself playing this game for favorite game project footage, not one of the games, not a spoiler, and after realizing that Valve gave away copies of this game with the Steam Controller, I decided it would be a novel way to play the game. And lo and behold, it worked really well. And that's because while Portal plays like a shooter, it really isn't one. It's a no-pressure puzzle game. Well, okay, there's some pressure, but there's not any bad guys shooting at you pressure. Alright, fatty, adopted. Okay, I've ruined this explanation. But you get the idea. The game plays fast and loose with portal precision, the concept is easy to understand, and the controls are very intuitive. The stick moves the character, the right trackpad looks around, the two triggers place portals, maybe add some jump and grab functions to the paddles, and that's it. You can beat the entire game knowing only those controls. With simple controls, and a simple concept, and one of the best difficulty curves in the business, it's a fantastic game for pure gaming beginners to pick up and learn the Steam Controller with. And with that experience, we're gonna move on to our second example, Dark Souls. Okay, okay, stop. Don't click off the video. I'm not joking. I'm not insane. I know Dark Souls is very, very hard. But that knowledge of Portal 2's controls will carry over to Dark Souls very nicely. Move and look controls are the same. Left and right triggers, like Portal 2, dictate much of the action. Except instead of placing portals, it's attack and shield bash. Oh, and those bumpers now do something too, only slightly different. Weak attack and guard, and because they're right next to the triggers, they're easy to learn. They're just weaker variants of what players are already doing with the triggers. So with just these two games, we're already expanding a beginning player's knowledge of the Steam Controller, from just a few buttons, to gradually going to the whole thing. And if they have the willpower to beat this game, which, I mean, I did, then they'll feel gratified. Amazing! 
ready to conquer any challenge. And that is exactly the kind of mood these beginning players need to be in so they can learn more games on the controller. So let's finish off with our final example. And this is going to sound slightly weird and slightly illegal. But the third example for learning the Steam controller is... Emulators. Take your pick. Nestopia, RetroArch, Dolphin, they all work pretty much perfectly with the Steam controller. Now, I know what you're going to say, and yes, downloading pirated ROMs is illegal. Don't do it. There are ways to get older games onto your computer that don't involve breaking the law. Google is your friend. But if you can do that, you'll find that for older console games, the Steam controller might just be one of the best controllers to use. It can emulate a lot of older controller functions, like the dual stage triggers on the GameCube controller, so playing Mario Sunshine isn't a total mess with this thing. Pun not intended. But if you look back at gaming history, you'll find that a lot of older games, especially from Nintendo, have a focus on making the controller as intuitive as possible for players. Games like the original Super Mario Bros. are fantastic learning tools for the Steam Controller and its left trackpad. Remember in my old Steam Controller video? But enough griping about the right trackpad. Let's gripe about the left one instead. Next up was Shovel Knight. You control our hero by clicking the left trackpad, again requiring a bit more force than usual, and moving your thumb in the direction you want to go. Hell, I felt more comfortable playing this game on the Steam Controller's analog stick, and I usually hate playing 2D games that way. Here's a tip. Go into controller settings, go into the left trackpad, and turn requires click off. You'll find an intriguing new way to play old games, especially if you don't find normal D-pads very comfortable. And if you're too lazy to try and get an old Mario game working on Steam, there are plenty of other great 2D games on Steam to help you learn instead. Shovel Knight being my own personal best example. But seriously, playing Super Mario World on the Steam Controller has been one of the most weirdly enriching gaming experiences of my entire year. Because it's a game I'm so intimately familiar with, but it still feels new with this new controller. It's hard to explain the feeling, but sometimes if you want to learn a new controller, an old standby is needed. That really just scratches the surface, though, of what kind of possibilities you can have with the Steam Controller. I've comfortably played everything from XCOM 2 to Paper Mario on this thing, not a spoiler. And let's not kid ourselves, the Steam Controller does still have issues. I'm never going to want to play Counter-Strike or Overwatch on this thing, and Origin games still don't work very properly. But this is one of the most interesting controllers I've ever had the privilege of using, and a year's experience has really done it some good. Now, all they have to do is make the big picture interface more tolerable. That won't take long, right Valve? Right? Right? <laughs>